Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, just trying to get some good work in. And it just right now we're just so thin in the secondary. Um, you know, I, I looked up before practice and you see, you know, Kobe Davis up there, Zion Keith, um, Nasir Greer. And, you know, those are, you know, three of your top four or five safeties and they're not practicing. And then you got Peyton Woolard out too. And, um, yeah, so we're just so thin. And, you know, we're not getting, we're trying to get as much work as we can, but we didn't want to extend the scrimmage and risk injuries. And we'd like to be able to have a spring game. So that's going to be somewhat limited too, probably. We're just, it's the nature of spring and camp that you get thin in one position and that position limits how much everybody else can do. How does that impact your work on the offensive side? I mean, that impacts more than just that one position. Yeah, right, whatever Dave? position you're thin at it. And, you know, we, we usually on the scrimmage want to get 80 to 90 plays, and we ended up today with about 70. And, uh, you know, so that, you know, cost your reps with younger kids that you want to develop. And it just it is what it is. But you don't want to extend the scrimmage and force the positions you're thin at to have to play too many plays that now you make a position that's thin even thinner. Maybe the best day of camp for Ja'Cory Roberson? Seemed like he made a bunch of plays out there. Yeah, it's funny. He probably had his worst practice yesterday. And uh, I got after him. I asked him if he was wearing 82 yesterday. So somebody stole his number and his identity. and um, But he showed up today, which was good. That's the response you want. So he's been having a really good camp. Yesterday, I thought he, he did not have one of his better practices. and. We met with him and dressed it, and I thought he came out today and looked really good and flashed and looked quick. And you know he's going to play a lot of football. We, we'd love to play two slots, and um, you know between him and Kendall, and then you're trying to get Isaiah Isaac and Nolan Gruel ready. Um, that would be an ideal situation. That'd be more depth than we've had at slot here in the last two, three years. Uh, you've been stuck playing Greg Dortch 95% of the plays, in the if year, not more. In the year before Tabari, when Greg went down, yeah. played all the plays. So. Um, you know, I really think we have three or four slots that are capable of playing and helping us win. And we'd like to keep the first two healthy. And but if it's a typical season, at some point you're going to go to three or four. Is the outlook for the safeties that you mentioned that are down, they're not coming back for at all this spring. Probably not this spring. But um, now Peyton Woolard is, is probably going to is going to be out for the year. Um, but we'd expect to get Kobe back. We expect to get Nasir back, and we expect to get Zion back. So you get those three guys back, your numbers get a lot better, and your depth gets better. And um, but guys always have a way of finding how to get healthy once once the, they keep score. What are you seeing from the guys that are out there with Trey Red and Luke Masterson? Um, I mean, I, I really think Trey Red has had uh, his best segment he's ever had here. You know, in terms of every spring football or fall camp he's been through. Um, he looks quicker, faster, playing more confident, um, reacting better, tackling better. He just, I'm really pleased with the progress he's making. Um, so I'm happy with him. I think Luke Masterson, you know, continues to develop and is a, a player that gives us a lot of versatility. He could really play four positions. You know, our rover, strong, free safety, and linebacker if he had to. So that that's invaluable for us. I think Steve was asking about it, but Justin's not that much of a concern at this well, point. Well, you don't want to speak to Riley right now. Every indication is that he'll be okay, but you know, you hate to ever say that. That's a yeah. you know knock on wood scenario that you just you're optimistic that he'll be fine, but until they rule out everything, um, I hate to say it and be wrong about it. So they don't want me diagnosing him. Given the depth concerns, were you still pretty happy with the work you got out here tonight? We did. I mean, I just, uh, you know, I mean, a lot of guys are getting reps. You know, Chase Monroe's playing football for the first time, and he made some plays, which is encouraging. And, you know, you're getting Loic Naya and Sean McGinn. And, you know, that's the nature of college football is you have a lot of guys that have played. And you're mixing in those guys that haven't played before, and those are the ones that need to work. And you have to get to work. You know, if you ever get to the point that, geez, we're banged up, we can't get work, well, then they're not going to be, you know they're not going to be ready to play. So you got to get out here a couple times in spring and a couple times in fall camp and get under the lights and do live work and play tackle football. Otherwise, all those things will get exposed once you start playing games and they keep scores. The fall starts, is that something you're happier to see here now than, than in October or November? Yeah, and there's just so many of them are guys that haven't played. 
that they're out here, it's a third down, and we're going to hard count on the defense shifts, and they haven't been in games before. And I mean, you don't want it to happen, period, but of course you'd rather have it in a scrimmage than once you get to a game. But I mean, those are the things that, you know, they're thinking about the play and the assignment, and then we're hard counting, or the defense is shifting, and, you know, you got to put it all together. You just can't know what the play is and react to the next thing you hear. And so these are invaluable lessons, and whether it's Spencer Clapp, you know, it's third down, and he's going to pass set, so he, he gets really deep, and now he's off the ball. And uh, you know he gets called for being in the backfield. So now that'll he's never been called for that before. So now he's aware of it, and hopefully it's something he doesn't do again. Were you telling a great story to the referees before the scrimmage started? Because you looked very animated for a couple moments to the point we thought you might have been yelling at them already. No. And then everybody started to laugh. So we figured you were telling a good story. No, it was we had the the one official at the uh, the NC State game. <laughs> And, uh, you know, on their, on their kickoff, they had a few guys that, like, were an inch or two off the line. And I was just kind of like, you're, you're going to let them do that? Like, Come on, coach. I'm not going to call it if it's an inch or two. I said, well, what's the rule? <laughs> and, uh, Come on, coach. So the second time they did it again. I said, so I guess this rule doesn't exist anymore. I said, coach, we're not going to call that. I said, well, wait till we kick off. And then we finally kicked off, and I'm like, Man, every guy's on the line. I go, you got to call the rules. You can't have anarchy in college football. I mean, so he just, he was retelling that story. <laughs> so he was telling the story, He not was telling you. the story. So I got all the officials together, and I just said, I just have a question. Is this legal in a kickoff or not? And I was off the line, and they got a kick out of it. So, and um, he's done a lot of our scrimmages, and um, he's a great guy. So I, I can joke with him, and... Hopefully it doesn't come back to haunt me in, you know, the third quarter of the Syracuse game or something. <laughs>